Carol, Peter Reynolds' report last week on seatbelt legislation uh, drew inflamed response from viewers on both sides of that issue. A uh, gentleman from Ottawa was so incensed by the item that he sent us a bundle of research to put us on the right track, saying that we would have on our conscience the lives of those who died in accidents defying compulsory seatbelt legislation. Well, perhaps the point of Peter's report needs reiteration. No one can logically oppose the wearing of seatbelts, but some people feel they must protest against being forced to wear them, and some are concerned that provincial governments across this country will buckle up their populations by law and then brush their hands and close the file on automobile safety. Well, that certainly seems to be happening in this country, as Peter Reynolds points out in tonight's report on unlegislated, nearly forgotten airbags. There are nine million passenger cars in Canada. Only 300 are equipped with airbags. Jim Fleming, a businessman who lives in Mississauga, Ontario, owns one of them. The bags cost $380, and they protect the driver and the front seat passengers. Basically, this is the uh, airbag for the driver's uh, side, and it comes out right in the middle of the wheel here, and it's a relatively small bag as compared to the bag for the passenger side, which comes out in this area in here, which fills up basically the whole s the seat on the passenger side. This is Mr. Fleming's second set of airbags. The first set saved him from serious injury and perhaps death while he was driving to a curling match earlier this year. I think I was, uh, I was watching the traffic on my left-hand side and probably my right front uh, tire cut the soft shoulder and just yanked me into the uh, ditch. How badly was the car damaged? Oh, approximately uh, total damage is in an area of $7,000. It, uh, it was much more damaged than uh, it was first estimated by the insurance company. How about the damage to you? Very little oil scratch across the side of my face, that's all. On a winter day in St. Louis de Haha in the province of Quebec, an Oldsmobile 98 equipped with airbags and carrying Laurent Dubay and his entire family collided head-on with a tractor trailer. Well, uh, those bags came out really fast. It took uh, one, one sixty of a second to, uh, I don't know. Uh, to blow up? Yeah, to blow up, that's right. Was anybody hurt? In no, no one, nobody was hurt. Uh, and now I'm glad that I did it because it saved my life. General Motors has been the only company to offer airbags as an option in big models only. They work, as these tests show. In high-speed crashes, seat belts can't offer nearly the same protection, although lap belts should be worn in airbag-equipped cars in case of rollovers and sideswipes. Fears that the bags will deploy accidentally are groundless. Even a bump or light crash will not trigger the sensors mounted in the front of the car. They work only in crashes over 15 miles an hour. There are drawbacks, they are expensive, and they can't be installed in small cars. But much cheaper airbag devices are becoming available. This system is a completely self-contained. It does not have any sensor devices outside, uh, under the bumper or uh, under the hood. Remove three... This bag costs only $75 and can be installed on the steering wheel of any size car. The bag contains its own triggering device, and it's made in Florida by the Control Laser Corporation. And you're That's ready to go. It. And you're ready to go. These tests show just how much protection you can get for $75. How do you feel, Ken? Beautiful, wonderful. Didn't hurt a bit? No, sir, didn't hurt a bit. Just felt like somebody hit you in the face with a feather pillow. I'm going down the highway. There's something coming at me. Sound away. Okay, go in collision. Come on. And this system could cost as little as $100. It's being developed at the University of Toronto by Pasquale Dantini. A gas station air pump arms the device, and the jolt of the driver's hand on the wheel triggers the balloon. Unlike General Motors' gas cartridge system, this device could be used over and over again in any size car. Okay, going collision. What you got? If all this inspires you to rush out and buy a car equipped with airbags, forget it. No dealer in Canada, as far as we know, has one for sale. 
and they definitely won't have any for sale when next year's models come out, because General Motors, the only company which offered airbags in its cars, will not offer them as an option on 1977 models. GM told us that there simply was not enough public interest in airbags. That's true because GM and the other North American car makers have done nothing to popularize airbags or counteract fears of accidental deployment. Uh, I have a strong feeling that it's, it's part of the, the economics rather than a real concern of the safety of the people that go in that car. The manufacturers are putting profit ahead of safety. It could be stated that way, possibly. Would you state it that way? I think I would. <laughs> Automobile manufacturers have always been uh, sort of dragged kicking and screaming into the whole safety era. They fought uh, from the very Fred beginning. Young has fought many years for safer cars. This week, the Ontario government is expected to name him chairman of a select committee on highway safety. Pressure from government. This is the only way we're ever going to get safety bags installed, is for governments to mandate them just as Ontario has mandated the use of safety belts in the motor cars. Then I think the next step is to get the uh, mandating of the uh, of the bags the united states are spending millions millions and billions to achieve safety on the road what the car is doing a flat nothing the politicians did come to see mr dantini's airbag they smiled they patted him on the back but when he asked for more development money they said no let the americans do it I don't, I don't trust the federal government, I don't trust the provincial government. There are so many politicians involved around, but when they got to care about Canada, they are doing a flat nothing. Ottawa's attitude to airbags is summed up in this statement by the Federal Minister of Transportation, Otto Lang. I am not convinced at this time that airbags are the answer. My department is keeping a close watch on the development of airbags and on what is going on in the United States. At the moment, there are still some questions about the effectiveness and the cost of this equipment. One, two, three. Mr. Lang has never seen an airbag demonstration. Cheer, my fellow Canadians. W5 will be back in just a moment.